Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Panther Pound Boxing Report, episode 209. I'm your host, Michael, joining me this week. Uh, Daniel uh, from the Inscriber, as well as uh, Scorsese. What's going on, fellas? Going on. Going on. Uh, for those who are new to the show, uh, once again, as always, Pound for Pound Boxing Report, live YouTube show, podcast, as well as blog discussing all things boxing. The motto is when boxing is good, we will talk about it. When it's bad, we will talk about it. Bottom line is, if it concerns the sweet science, we will talk about it. Um, if you want to find out any and all information regarding Pound for Pound Box Report, blog page is, is the place to go to, P4P Box Report, uh, .wordpress.com. That's the link. Uh, you check the right of the uh, blog page, you'll find links to what a, for our channels and our pages on um, Facebook, T Plus, YouTube, Twitter. Uh, Tumblr, as well as links to what to listen to the show on SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitch Radio, Google Play Music, Player FM, uh, um, as well as Mixcloud. Let's get the show started this evening. I'm recapping what we've done last week. I guess the quote unquote big bout of the weekend was a uh, highly anticipated showdown between um, Adonis Stevenson, Badu Jack. Uh, Stevenson defended his uh, WBC and Lidio. Excuse me. Uh, light heavyweight titles against Jack. Uh, fight ended up being a draw. For me, it was a first half, second half fight. Um, first half of the fight, the action wasn't that great, but uh, Stevenson was um, in, in control. Uh, second half, Jack started to really, really come on. Um, at times, he was really dominating Stevenson. A uh, tight turn a bit for Stevenson in round 10. He heard about do Jack bat badly with the body shot. Uh, but uh, by the end of the fight, uh, Stevenson was uh, virtually out on his feet. He was in survival mode. Uh, and if this was an old school 15 round fight, uh, I believe uh, Madonna Stevenson would have been uh, stopped. I believe two of the scorecards had it 114, 114. Um, I think the third scorecard had it in favor of um, uh, Stevenson, I believe, majority round, majority decision draw. Uh, uh, um, I'll go to you, Daniel, first. Uh, your thoughts on the fight? Uh, a lot of back and forth about who about who people felt won. I personally felt that, that Baldu Jack won by a point. I know plenty of others felt that Stevenson uh, won that fight and deserved a decision. Your thoughts? Uh, first, uh, the third scorecard actually went to Badu Jack. Uh, I'm sorry, Badu Jack. My apologies, yes. uh, folks, because uh, it's been a rough few days now. I'm a bit fatigued, but we're going to get the show going anyway. Proceed, Daniel. Okay. Well, it it turned out to be a pretty much a quintessential Badu Jack fight. He is a slow starter, unfortunately. And Stevenson was able to get the jab going in the first round land a couple of left hands the problem though unfortunately for stevenson was jack didn't really show any major signs that he felt a lot of the power of steven of stevenson's punches because when you watch the fight a second time a lot of those left hands that he was throwing didn't really land flush now, you can credit that to Pablo Jack's defense, but you can also take into account the fact that Stevenson hasn't really been active lately. And unfortunately, if you're not active for a while, even if you have really good training cap, your skills are going to erode. And that, and that started to show a little bit with Stevenson, but he showed a better boxer. He's technically overall a better boxer than Pablo Jack. But the main issue, and this main issue that showed up pretty much through his entire tenure, is if you take him into a little bit of deep water, he'll get fatigued. And it, and it showed him around from the second half fight on. Other than that 10th round where he landed a good body shot to Jack, Bado Jack started landing combinations. He was starting to land, check right hooks, check left hooks, through the guard of Stevenson, and did answer back on the low blow that Stevenson threw in. But did throw a couple of more and got properly chastised by the referee for doing so. But at the same time, it didn't it that didn't negate the rest of the work that Bottle Jack did, where I said Landon's combinations picking up the pace 
showing that Stevenson really, really, really can get fatigued if you drag him into deep waters. And I said, there's a strong case for you people to say that Jack won. I'm perfectly fine with a draw because he didn't do enough in the first half of the fight to say that you can give him that you can give him another round out of those first six rounds. But you can also make the case, particularly in the last round, that you some people can actually say you can discount it as a 10-8 round, which how with how fatigued and how pretty much out on his feet Stevenson was. But you know, it turned out to be a good fight. It had, it was, at first it showed signs a little bit that it was going to turn to be a little bit of a snoozer. Luckily, it didn't. And while both say that the rematch is going to happen, uh, there's somebody by the name of the nail that has something to say about that, and we just have to see if it happens. Uh, I go to you, Scott. So is it my fresh crush, frustration? Um, even though I had Jack winning by a point, um, he was right there on on the cusp, but he didn't take that final step to really uh, uh, take Stevenson out. At the end of round nine, Stevenson looked like he was wanting, wanting to quit. Uh, and you could see it, but it's just like it was right there for him. He just wouldn't um, pull the trigger, and it almost came back to bite him uh jack in round 10 when he got hurt by the body shot as a result uh your thoughts your thoughts on the fight uh scorsese i, I give very jack i bought jack very little credit i i've never seen daniel mentioned the low blows and uh and he threw about maybe eight to ten of them like he he went borderline maybe on four then you could say four or five or six of them dog i never i'm not this kind of guy that watches boxing and say you know, do it back, do it back. Now, I, I'm kind of not there to see that. I'm kind of there to see skills of these men on display. And I think Badu Jack did all he could. It just was a chance, you know, to get him out of it. It's just a guy that I looked at him and I thought on my live stream, yo, Donis wants to quit. They may pull him. He's old and he's, you know, he's taking a whooping due to these low blows, in my honest opinion. He's tired from them as well. His legs are, you know, like Daniel said, a bit eroding from these things. And natural stamina kicking in as well, but Badu Jack excelled that, you know, he pushed that shit forward. And I never in my wildest dreams that I did I think that Badu Jack was going to pull this shit because I'd never seen him do it. And I honestly don't believe he deserves a rematch. You, you're dealing with a dude that's had a clean championship run, not cheated nobody, does Vada 24-7, 365 if they ask. And this the best way you can go perform? I, I've been loving Badu Jack. Only one, of, only one of the guys has been bigging him up. But I'm not bigging that shit up. And, and, and this shit was intentional. This man went to the corner one round and was smiling at Floyd Mayweather after he just landed a damn low blow, a borderline shot, shaking his head, saying, yeah, yeah, y'all was right. Like this was his plan and shit. I don't know about that. He did it. I'm, I promise you. He did no, it. No, no. Well, I don't know what you're talking about, the smiling, but I don't know about all the stuff about – him just intentionally going low and low like that. If you're going to say that, then let's 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 call out Stevenson for holding an awful lot. I will. We'll get there. We'll get there. But I'll say this: I'd rather be held than hit low. All my life, I'd rather be held. And I do. I think that was a trade off with the referee saying, "Yes, you hit him low, and he's holding you. He's older than you. You've been doing that, and I ain't taking no points because I wanted about to finish out right." I disagree with the ref. He should have took some damn points. And he should have told him, I kick you out this damn ring because you a challenger for this title and you will not change boxing history with bullshit. I wouldn't want that personally. But I picked Jack going into the fight. I thought, you know, okay, he's going to start off. They're going to want to get inside as quick as possible, push Adonis back. That's where Adonis has had problems. Adonis has had not had problems with people that try to avoid his left hand and circle to his right or their left. He, he don't have trouble with that shit. 
Jack stayed enough out of range in the first and circled enough and got very little done offensively early. Therefore, he didn't deal with straight left hands. He didn't have to. He was out of range. They were so far apart. Adonis Stevenson, for four rounds, they were this way. Five and six, Adonis Stevenson started to whoop his ass, started to get on him. And it was at that moment right there when Badu Jack realized this motherfucker hit too hard. He was running already. It wasn't like he ran when he got hit in the stomach, but he got hit with a few of those uppercuts through the guard and body shots. And he took the hell out the pocket. And I said, OK, he's hurt. That's hurting him. Adonis Stevenson threw a straight left hand and straight low. At that point, Badu Jack took liberty after liberty after liberty repeatedly. The referee even saw this. Some of them he didn't see because Badu Jack got on the opposite side of him and wham, in the pocket with uppercuts, hip shots, you name them. He, he did this until the end of round nine. I don't think he threw any more low blows. But from round six to nine, he took liberties on an older fighter. He fatigued him, and it helped him beat him up. I'm not so sure. And I don't think Badu Jack should get a rematch. And Kathy Duva, you better shut your mouth talking about Badu Jack and Bilville before your young champion get his dick beat off like your old champion did. Okay? You better shut up. You better wisen the fuck up. Because Badu Jack need to prove that this ain't him no more. If he's doing shit like this, he don't need title shots. All right? But for me, in a rematch, if they are to have one, I think Adonis Stevenson is about dumb enough to take one. Personally, I don't think he's a duck. think the facts say he's not. So he's going to fuck around and take the rematch. And the WBC said they listen to the, you know, listen to the teams that they want to rematch. And if this doesn't happen, I think Badu Jack is stopped in less than eight rounds. Just like I felt he was finna be when in the sixth round when when Adonis showed me man to man, he's Badu Jack's boss. But when it came to them low blows, he couldn't handle it. And yes, he naturally fatigues. But another thing he naturally does is catch a second win. And in this one, he done that shit unnaturally because he got hit so low so much and he still had a second win. Now, as far as being out on his feet in the tour, the man was dead fucking tired. I think he has a better chin than advertise a warrior spirit that people may not want to give him credit for. But I tell you some names out there that done quit on their stool and I thought he was going to do it. So I owe that man an apology. But Badu J Chavez, Oscar, hell, uh, Tyson biting ears, former quitting. Lenares just quit the other day if you really want to get technical. But um, uh, to Adonis Stevenson, Badu Jack, a good fight. But if, if Badu Jack take that shit out of there, I can appreciate what he done. But I am tired of dirty fighters, and I, I can't wait to Joshua Wilder. I hope it just gets so nasty in there so the casuals, the sports, right? Everybody can be disgusted to the point that we want cheaters the hell out this sport. I can't wait because they Badu Jack ruined a good fight for me. He, you going he, too he, far with this stuff, no, calling, him a, let's no, call no. him a cheater now. No, 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 no. I'm not saying his career, but that night, I, I, I honestly believe Badu Jack had that in his plan because he could not take the power of Adonis Stevenson. And even when Adonis Stevenson was dead tired and broken down from some clean, a lot of clean shots got in after the low blows, he still couldn't take the power. Adonis showed him he was not man enough to fuck with him through cheating or through real boxing. And, and I think that right there alone says if you get in that ring and you play this shit fair, you don't last eight rounds. I honestly believe that. And I'm mad at Badu Jack because you're a better man than that and you're a better fighter than that. You are my two-time fighter of the year. And you did not win that shit by doing that shit you done Saturday night. That is disgusting to me and I'm sick of, I'm sick of that kind of fighting. Take your loss like a man and be respected as one. Don't. I'll just end it there for me. I, I, I just can't. Uh. <laughs> Go ahead, Daniel. What you what he calls rough and dirty, I, I call physical and being professional. Yeah. <laughs> Let, let's just put it to you this way. And this may throw off a whole tangent again. But once again, I think because he's, he's is really just underscoring the fact that Adonis Stevenson started the low blows. Yes, and he did. No, 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 I'm not. Yes, he did. He went, he strayed low. And now, I, Daniel, I would be blasting them both if he continued that behavior. Adonis did not try to retaliate. He actually strayed low. And Badu just made a pizza out of the shit. Pepperoni, sausage, extra yeah. cheese he went. But and you I, also I, have to realize a lot of the low blows were also in the clinch when they were really close on the, on the inside. That's the one of the unfortunate things about 
fighting on the inside. When you have two people really close on the inside, you can't throw the punch, especially in the short range that you want to at times. A lot of them were straight right hands borderline. Uh, one of them was a f two of them, I would say, flat out jabs to the dick. And I'm just thinking, what, what, why are you doing this? And he better than that, man. He's so much better than it. But like I said, like I said, the next champion he gives one to, and you, you seen Kovalev already crumble from shit like this. Don't be surprised if they think, oh, Badu Jack's easy work, and he find out that he don't like their power, and he starts this shit up again, and some champion is sitting on the ropes quitting. I, I wouldn't give him a title shot. I wouldn't. I'm, I wouldn't. And well, if I did, if I did, I'd be telling the rep, you watch that motherfucker right there, because I'm here to fight with my fist from navel up, from from my own, from from legal area up. So far, he ain't from that shit. He's not at light heavyweight. Well, we'll put it. Let's let's put let's put it in this perspective. Just based on the fact that all the blood and pretty much how beat up Stevenson was mm -hmm. in the second half of the fight, there's no way in hell Al Heyman and them is probably going to allow him to take a second fight. They're going to look at it. They're going to look at what he's been criticized at. Try to get an easy opponent, which may actually be Vostick in this case, considering how he looked in this last fight. Yeah, you know, Clemus is, is, is probably going to push that, going to push that button in mm -hmm. because. Ultimately, if you have a rematch, I wouldn't mind it. Like I said, I'm fine with a draw. But it is indicative, unfortunately, when it comes to Bada Jack, that this is like this is his third or fourth draw that he's had in recently. Something in him, unfortunately, doesn't go to finish. That's my point. That, I, think yeah, this, it, I think this is right for first one. This is his rightful first one. I had a draw on my card. If anything, I favored round one, round 12 swing in a way because Stevenson was hurting him early and then he tired out. But I gave it to Jack as he came back and he landed those hooks at the end. But this is his first one actually for me where I said, OK, draw. But honestly, he did not deserve it. Like, honestly, he just he bullshitted his way to it. But he, he's. He's going to get other shots. And I'm telling you, man, if he don't like that power, he didn't like that power. He that man is dick. I don't I think even if Stevenson didn't go low, Jack was going to find his way to it. You know, that it's a way to drain him. That's a way to drain a 40 year old fighter that hasn't been fighting. Why not? But at the end of the day, I, I just call it out with any fighter. We are going to agree to disagree on that one. Um, uh, sometimes when you fight a certain style, uh, punches may straight borderline, but uh, in my opinion, it's just wrong to just go out and out and and and, and call him um, dirty. If you want to call him rough, physical, uh, yeah, because there are plenty of other fighters historically who've fought like that. There are other players who fought worse like that, worse mm -hmm. than um, um, what Badu Jack, and and you know they don't get the the, the label of being quote unquote dirty. Uh, so no, I, that's just something I just don't um, accept uh, of Jack in, in this fight in particular. Uh, he was having trouble doing one way. He adjusted. Uh, he had success making that adjustment. Uh, he could have finished the job. He almost finished the job. He didn't. Kudos to Stevenson for showing second, third win. Kudos for Stevenson for showing uh, heart. Kudos for Stevenson's for showing, I think, better boxing skills that many people give him credit for. But at the end of the day, uh, uh, good competitive fight. He was almost out of it. And we will see if they fight again. We will see. Stevenson says he wants it. Uh, Jack says he wants it. A um, couple of days later to sit and ponder on it. I don't know if the rematch will happen. Uh, but I just appreciate this fight uh, uh, for what it is. Uh, this fight between Stevenson and Jack took place in uh, Toronto, part of a Showtime doubleheader, if you will. Uh, this fight in Toronto on the, I guess what you could call the co-feature, co-main event, uh, took place, I believe, in was it Oxen Hill, uh, Maryland. Uh, Gary Russell Jr. Uh, defending his WBC featherweight belt against uh, number one contender Jojo Diaz. Um, first four, first four or five rounds. And I'll go to you on this one first, Scorsese. It, it, Diaz, he was right in there. Uh, he was landing some mean body shots. Uh, 
during that point. But uh, I got to give Gary Russell credit. Part of it was because D D Diaz, he fought at one speed. Uh, the speed that he, sh the pace that he showed during the first four or five rounds of the fight, he stayed at that pace virtually all fight long. But I have to give credit for uh, Gary Russell Jr., who's, who stepped it up, uh, uh, moved a little bit more, boxed a little bit more, uh, showed a little bit more toughness than I thought he had. And over the second half of the fight, to me, he completely controlled uh, Jojo Diaz. Wasn't that much adjustments made by Diaz because he fought at the same pace virtually out throughout the whole fight. But again, uh, you have to give uh, Gary Russell Jr. credit for what he did. And I thought he won by a clear decision. Your thoughts, Scorsese? I don't, I, I don't really credit Russell as much as I'm looking at Diaz saying, sir, what the hell did you do? Why did you stop? I mean, anytime he hit him, Gary Russell was wobbling. He was feeling the physicality of the fight. Diaz looked like a 135-pounder fighting a 126-pounder. I, I was dumbfounded. I, I, I said, check the kid's bank account. I said, my man B. Marsh might be in the stands holding the gun, and all of all of D.C. might have told this dude, if you leave this arena, you and Golden Boy ain't going to make it back to the West Coast. I don't know what happened. But this kid was beating the hell out of Gary Russell. It, you, If you take that kind of punishment for 12 rounds, you ain't the same fighter no more. It's the kind of punishment he was giving him to the body. Eventually, the body going to break, head going to fall, and he going to kick the head around on the ground like a bottle. And my man just quit punching. Yeah, Gary Russell was trying to use movement. He was trying to stand in the pocket. It didn't matter. Diaz showed he had an answer for everything he did early. His jab was longer, better, harder early. Then the kid stopped throwing punch. I'm saying, okay, I'm counting down the rounds, five, six rounds. I'm counting. I'm counting down the time in a round. I said, it's 2.30. He ain't throwing but two punches. Oh, man, it's two minutes. I'm like, he going to pick this shit up eventually. He, nothing. Now just watching the fight with me. Now just giving him rounds for the killer body shots, for the harder, bigger shots, moving Gary Russell. This the worst championship performance I've seen since the Dorta Coast. It's not. It's better than Dorta Coast, because in a sense he threw more than the one two, and he went to the body. He did break range. He was a little more defensively responsible, and not just taking punishment and getting up and taking it again. But I have no explanation for why Joseph Diaz, not on the canvas, not visibly shaken by shots, I have no explanation why the man could punch. I, I literally say, check that man's bank account. He was whooping Gary Russell ass, and I don't favor Russell against the Santa Cruz. I, I No, I wasn't impressed. I saw a guy that was getting hurt. He couldn't block the body shots. More than getting hurt. He couldn't stop him from landing. I was just thinking, okay, this title's changing hand. Next thing you know, this dude's not doing anything no more. If there's something to credit Russell for, I I missed it. I'm just I'm looking at Diaz's heart, saying I can't trust him. You know, I don't know. Your thoughts, Daniel? Daniel, it, 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 okay. it was it was a tale of two fights in a way, and. I have to commend Russell because he did make adjustments in the second half of the fight to vary his combinations. And that may have been what stunned Diaz. I, hope, I think Diaz was probably hoping that the body work would tire out Russell enough to take him on the second half of the fight. But I got to give credit to Gary Russell. He, for somebody that adheres to the fight once a year plan, he took the punches and he was able to weather them after – a good beating, like I said, Scorsese is right. He took a beating on the body in the first half of the fight. Now, the second the second half of the fight, that's where the combination coming in. That's where the hand speed started coming in for Gary Russell. And ultimately, that's it. That ultimately won in the fight. I do have to commend Diaz, though, because uh, you know how some fighters usually, if they lose, they don't try to they try to say a little bit something different or they try to say, I actually won. DS took the loss like a man. <laughs> so he lost. <laughs> and, and, like on, and on Twitter, he said, I should have started earlier. I'm a loss. But that shows to me like a, a sign of 
maturity, a sign that you know you made mistakes and maybe you'll come back better a second time around because it depends on the sanctioning body, he'll probably be there again. Because it wasn't a it wasn't a thorough dressing down by Gary Russell Jr. It wasn't something like Gary Russell was fighting somebody and it was just he was just so much above it. No, Diaz was giving him work. Diaz was the first live body in the bit that Gary Russell faced, and it showed in the first half of the fight. He made the proper adjustments and he was able to take win out in this in the second half of the fight and went out pretty well, but that's the thing, though, when it comes to Gary Russell. I'm not going to put him against somebody like a violent puncher like Santa Cruz because Santa Cruz will just keep coming. We know he'll just keep coming. He showed that two times against Carl Frampton. He showed that he's going to show that most likely against Morris once again. And, and let's not forget that I, I know we haven't talked about this fight yet, Mike, but remember. He may actually start being the weak link because Lee Selby's out of that picture now. Josh Warrington showed up. <laughs> yeah. So that's gonna be a pretty that's gonna be a pretty good stake to be in the featherweight division. But Gary Russell, hopefully he does fight again this year. Not just this once a year plan because it's starting to get boring. And it doesn't make any sense. I know he wants to talk about what well, he wants to preserve his body and 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 all this and that but you what 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 you're doing is you letting them you're sitting there and you're letting the rest of the parade um um, um go by you because there are other fighters out there um in and around his weight range who are putting in work um oh. and he doesn't have the cachet to just sit back once a year and just like um i'll just sit back in the cut and wait on whatever he doesn't make that kind of money he's not the cash cow i don't get it I don't um, get it. Go ahead, Scott Sainzy. Daniel's right. He didn't look like he was head above head and shoulders above nothing. And and if he keep on saying his Santa Cruz name, he's gonna have L number two on his record. You can't you can't beat Santa Cruz off the back foot or if he come forward, Gary. He is not the amateurs no more, sir. He's better than you and he's smarter than you at this point. I, I, just, I honestly do believe that. Diaz showed so many things in you is crazy he he should be kicking himself easy diaz is either kicking himself or enjoying his damn money I, that, that's that's one of the two things he's doing but i i just couldn't believe this kid man like breaking his body you see him wobbling around the ring you hit him with a jab and i saw acceptance in gary russell face if y'all feel what i'm saying like how i felt about adonis in the eighth and ninth round i saw acceptance from those shots he started trying to get them little pity pats in and it, whoa i'm thinking to myself yo he getting stopped tonight that's not a good sign when i'm feeling that way and the kid quit fight and he basically just stops i i can't praise the adjustment i didn't see it i, I what i saw was a punch count just diminish I, no gary 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 bruh you gotta pick it up because warrington he brought it he brought that shit, and if he ain't scared to look at you and bring it like that, you might not like that work. Well, speaking of uh, uh, Josh Warrington, let's move on to uh, that fight. Uh, he uh, challenged Lee Selby for his uh, Selby's uh, belt, IBF belt, at 126 pounds. The fight took the fight took place in um, uh, Warrington's uh, hometown of um, Leeds, over in the UK. And um, uh, you, you you got to give Warrington credit. Um, he fought like a man possessed. Uh, was in Selby's face all night long. Um, terrific determination, outstanding conditioning. Um, not a puncher, uh, but he has a way of wearing you out. Um, cut up uh, Selby over over both eyes. Um, and Selby, he 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 didn't know what to do. Uh, he couldn't keep Warrington off of him all night long. Um, he had uh, some success here and there, uh, but it was um, Warrington all the way. Split decision, I don't care about that. Uh, I don't understand the judge who scored the fight for Selby. It didn't make any sense to me. But, uh, yeah, you have to give uh, uh, Josh Warrington credit here. Uh, 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 um, he swarmed uh, uh, Lee, Lee Selby, and, and Selby had absolutely 
uh, no answers at all. Uh, your thoughts, fellas? <laughs> you start first, Corsese, yeah, because dear he, Jesus. <laughs> he whooped his ass. That's what that is. Simple as that. He said, come here. Look, he, you know, you order your meal. He knew his fight was coming. You you at the ordering thing. You know what you're getting. Then you pull up round window number two or number one, and you fuck that shit up. That's what Warrington did. You know, he knew he had somebody not going to hurt him with punches, somebody that don't like physicality, and he went in there and beat the hell out this man. Beat the hell out. He, I mean, this kind of fight make everybody a fan of you. You know what I mean? Like, you just flat out brought it. You talking about hooks? upstairs to the head hooking with hooking with each other and always seeming to win it step in jabs body work you name it whooped his ass knocked him back <laughs> god tell me take the ass whooping of years so far and that's just what it is i don't care if you don't hit the canvas you didn't get knocked down you took the ass whooping of a year and the man made himself a true player and not just for gary russell he made himself a player from for leo santa cruz I, and I and I value Leo Santa Cruz very highly, but this dude right here ain't no joke right now. Fighting with that kind of tenacity, Carl Frampton, you better hey, you better watch who you calling out over there in the UK, because he he kind of done him like uh, Santa Cruz did you, but at at times more volume. And you know you don't like that kind of fight, Carl. You know your technique ain't good enough. This dude might be the best in the damn division. I, I don't know. I want to see. He whooped his ass. That was fun to watch that was fun to watch big crowd he deserves everybody in there he, it wasn't a dirty fight super physical with him right in the pocket he jabbed his face off it too that was the most impressive thing just stepping in there with him and said pop take this jab before i come rip the take this jab before i come whoop the rest of your ass that's what his jab was his jab was a warning that i'm on my way to whoop the rest of your ass and that's what kind of jab i like <laughs> i liked it your thoughts, Daniel? This was supposed to be an easy fight for Lee Selby. I can remember that. This was supposed to be a cakewalk for him. Now, we don't know if it was the fact that, like we've mentioned it before year-round, that Lee Selby, we considered him among the champions, the weak link and featherweight. We don't know if it's that or the fact that the fight was in Leeds, Josh Warrington's from Leeds, and in winning, he became the first champion from Leeds. And that fueled it up. But Josh Warrington came and beat him up, took his lunch money, and then came back for his dinner money. That's how vicious of a beating he gave to Lee Selby. Now, I I kind of expected one card. It is it is a matchroom card. You're gonna get some, you're gonna get some buffoonery out of it once in a while. But Jesus, yeah, that that was not a fight Lee Selby wanted. And Josh Warrington now, it's gonna be interesting to see how he fares up because obviously, like I said, he's linked up to Matchroom. So and Matchroom isn't exactly right now very, very uh friendly without Heyman. So it may throw him against you. You may throw away a unification with Santa Cruz, it may probably throw away Gary with Gary Russell. But it's true. Carl Frampton is there. He's the interim champion. And when he recovers, Oscar Valdez is there. So that should be a very interesting show. I just hope that this isn't a one-off because I don't want Warrington to just be a situation like Zerto where he looks good against the champion and any defenses, he doesn't look the same. Well, you speaking of Frampton, he was doing commentary uh, for the no, he was ringside. I, I can't remember if he was doing commentary for the fight. And you're talking about Frampton having his big fights um, um, in in um, Northern Ireland in uh, in August. Uh, will that fight be against? Uh, will that fight for Frampton be against Warrington? Um, who know, who knows? Uh, it would be a big fight over in the U in in the UK. Uh, will make a lot of money. Um, don't mention Oscar Valdez. He'll need that kind of uh, tenacity given the rough fights he's had back to back to back. Um, he needs a he needs an easy fight coming off of uh, uh, 
the damage that he suffered in his last fight. He 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 got broken face. So uh uh Russell, uh Santa Cruz, Morris, who knows? Uh promotional red tape may be in there for but for me, if they could make that fight with Frampton in August, September, that's probably the direction they're gonna go. Shit, no, they ain't, but they're not making no warranting fight. <laughs> I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Nope. Dude, go kick his ass. Dude, he couldn't handle uh, Quig for four rounds. Quig only fought, what, four or five rounds? This dude fight 12 rounds. 12 crazy rounds. He get there. He use a jab, unlike Quig. He will beat the shit out of Carl Frampton, in my honest opinion, right now. Everything changed. <laughs> Everything changed the moment he took that belt. <laughs> New plans. Valdez. Yeah, you're right. Hey, he done had a rough one. Why not him? Frampton ain't dumb, man. That's a big ass 126 pounder, by the way. Who's big? Um any interest in talking about the uh 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 the light flyweight uh fight in Japan with uh Butler and Tagushi, or should we move on? All I got to say is Hickey Butler's my boy. He's been my boy for a minute. And that was a hell of an upset to pull off in Japan. Don't know if he can maintain it, though, because he's been a career straw weight. But, yeah, I'll just say it again. Hickey Butler's my boy. Yeah, you got to give him credit. I didn't think he would be able to do it. Uh, wasn't sure he was going to get a decision, but uh, he came out on fire from jump. Uh, 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 punches and bunches on um, 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 Taguchi, boxing the mess out of him. Really, Taguchi, he didn't know what to do. Uh, took him into the eighth, ninth round. I think he stunned him in the ninth round. Uh, when Butler started to fade a bit, but um, he showed champ, he showed metal, um, hung on, um, uh, and, and, and got the decision. Um, I would be surprised if eventually there's a rematch with the two. Um, but I think I don't know if Butler has a mandatory coming up or, or not. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was a, re a virtual rematch. Um, let's move on to some news. Uh, wasn't gonna have any news, but given the situation with Broner, um, I'll let you uh, touch that, Daniel. Then we can uh, respond. Apparently, um, Adrian Broner, excuse me, Eddie Hearn made a a, a offer to. Uh, Broner, uh, six million dollar deal. I think Broner turned it down. Um, went on some rants about it on on social media. Uh, get some insight into that. Okay, so obviously, if we uh, to refresh people's minds, Eddie Hearn is going to have a total of sixteen cards here in the U.S. within a span of eight years, which pretty much means two major cards a year. Streaming through a network, DAZN, with a billion-dollar war chest. Billion. So naturally, Eddie Hearn needs fighters to fill those cards. Because for the moment, Anthony Joshua is not part of this deal. So, and he, all the fighters that he named that he wanted to sign, interestingly enough, are Al Heyman fighters. Fighters who have a promoter that can't act as a promoter because otherwise then he'll admit he's breaking federal law. He approached everybody, and this is the second time that Broner has done this. Remember, he, did, uh, he got offered $40 million <laughs> by Rock Nation when Rock Nation was starting out. He turned them down, and Broner turned this one down, saying, calling it a slave deal. Now, I'm going to keep this in mind when it comes to Broner. Broner barely makes a billion, a million dollars for a fight right now. Barely. And Andy Hearn is offering to double that amount for him. And we, when you say slave deal, I, I understand the mentality that Al Heyman is planning on those fighters. 
to me personally, this is just Broner knowing that he's seen Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn will act like a promoter, and in many ways, he'll actually hold you accountable for the crap that you pull. Al Heyman, for the most part, has pretty much let Broner do whatever the hell he wants, which includes robbing people, which includes showing pictures on Instagram with guns, talking about killing himself, and reward him with million-dollar paydays. Knowing for a while, he doesn't really need to be rewarded with million-dollar paydays. So I find it funny that Adrian Broner turns on a deal that would essentially double the purses that he gets now. But I, thinking about it, I can see why he did it because Eddie Hearn probably wouldn't let him do whatever he wanted. Eddie Hearn probably would try to hold him accountable for certain things. And unfortunately, Adrian Broner has shown that he doesn't like accountability. He doesn't like being held up to his actions or expected or expect to follow discipline. I'll leave it at that. Oh, I got something for you. It says on Twitter, uh, Adam Averwood says, I guess it was silly of Eddie to think that Broner would have even want to fight three times a year. Steven Espinosa comments and says, it was silly of him to think that AB isn't already making more than $2.5 million a fight. Abram was replies by saying getting paid under the table question mark his official purses aren't that high that's a problem I had with Showtime and Wilder uh, Steven Espinosa he is a big boss man right now he running shit at least over here in the states he's doing a damn good job with his network but as far as these guys you know I'm getting paid under the table and then telling all of the US on Twitter I, I kind of don't believe that like, you know, my, my official purse is a lie and I'm evading potential taxes and things like that. I, yeah, I kind of don't believe that. So, Broner, it's only right for you to turn down $6 million because you turned down way more than that. You turned down, what, how, how, what, I'm nearly 10 times that? Eight times. Yeah, around eight yeah, times that. Nearly 10 times. You turned down that, so... It ain't no, it ain't no thing. This is what you do, you know. But so, if you gonna get, if you t if you turn down that much, what makes you going What makes what makes him think that he's going to get anything close to that? Given how he's been fighting lately. Hey, it, hey, look, it's the well, AB way. We can't think like AB. We, that we don't make any we, sense. If we think like AB, we'd be on Twitter and Instagram doing the AB shit. So let's, I mean, let's, not, dude, let's not think it's, like it's AB. not even that. It's not I even mean, that. But Scorsese, he's been he's been losing more than winning. Yeah, I I get no argue for me. All I can tell you is if I try to think like A B, I put myself in some horrible places. <laughs> so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna accept I'm just gonna accept whatever that man does. I'm saying that's on you, G. That's how I go. Well, no, we have to base it upon this. Like and like I said, this goes back to Al Heyman. Al Heyman has sold the philosophy of his fighters that any promotional contract, this you know, particularly to African American fighters, because uh, what I'm about to say next, he treats Latino fighters very differently. But when it comes to African American fighters, he sold them on the idea that any promotional contract is putting shackles on them. So just basically just fight one time, one time, just do this one deal thing. You'll, you'll make more money out of it in the long run. But what has happened is they depended upon a war chest that has been decreasing in the PDC. And not only has been decreasing, the avenues that you can put in the PDC have also decreased. So, but some fighters have fully bought into that. Adrian Broner is one of those people that fully has bought into it. And, and like I said, and it also goes in, like I said, into the matter of discipline. What has Al Heyman shown that he will actually hold Adrian, Adrian Broner accountable for his bullshit? Everything that he's done. Like I said, the guns, the robbery in the bowling alley, beating people up. Shooting up a shooting up a SUV, I think near near some cops. What 
what action has Al Heyman done to hold him accountable saying you can't do this shit? None. So of course Adrian Boner is not going to go to somebody that may say, yeah, you're doing stupid shit. Stop it. Because whenever somebody has tried to give him advice, he scoffed at it. He's even scoffed at ideas from Floyd, the guy he was emulating for the longest time. And ultimately, like I said, that falls into it. it that's that's going to fall into it. He's one of those people that fully bought into the Al Heyman plan. Now, in hindsight, the Rock Nation deal looks probably better because Rock Nation, unfortunately, it's probably run better if you give it to an orangutan. But when you have somebody like Eddie Hearn, who knows what he's doing, you know the war chest that he's dealing with. It is double what Al Heyman had. <laughs> oh, and by the way, you don't have to worry about networks telling you to telling you to censor yourself or to tone it down. It's a streaming service. You're gonna get paid to say whatever the fuck you want. Even if it is stupid. It's only fitting that he turns down a deal because he's probably thinking, oh, I can always make a, make another million, another great big pay these out because unfortunately Al Heyman's gonna keep giving him chances. That's the problem. Al Heyman's gonna the only way Adrian Bourne is gonna learn, unfortunately, is if Al Heyman stops giving him chances that no, no more fights for you, no more, no more million dollar paydays for you. We can't you can't do this anymore because from the first fight, from the first fight, remember, he was part of the first PBC card on NBC. He says something stupid. NBC told Al Heyman, we don't want that guy anymore on our airwaves. And that's unfortunately the, the stance that's following him right now. And yeah, it's only fitting that he turns down a payday that guaranteed him double his purse. Seven to seven score says it before we move on and start previewing fights. <laughs> Two words. The problem. <laughs> that pretty much says it all. That pretty much says it all. The problem in more ways than what? Because yeah. Uh yeah. He gets offered big money. Uh he gets good money this time, uh, and and he I don't I don't get it I I I don't get it especially when you've been again um, losing uh, more uh, than winning. Uh, what makes him think he's he he deserves more than even what 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 Hearn is giving him now? But uh, you know, as you said, Scorsese, uh, uh, if you try too hard trying to uh, think like A B, uh, uh, you'll get yourself in a whole lot of trouble. <laughs> kind of reminds me of uh, if you try to think, try to think, get into the head of Kanye, you get your whole, you get yourself in a whole lot of trouble. So there you go. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's, let's, move, let's move on um, to preview some fight that's going down this weekend. Uh, big fight uh, coming up on Friday uh, in Tokyo, I think it is. Uh, uh, Jamie McDonald going to Japan to defend his WBA 118-pound um, belt against um, Naoya Inoue. And for those, uh, for fans here in the U.S. Uh, specifically, uh, uh, ESPN Plus has decided to uh, pick up the fight. So if you're subscribed to ESPN Plus, uh, you can uh, check the fight out there uh, live. Uh, I'll go to you first, Daniel. Your, your, your preview of this fight, who do you give the advantage to? A lot of people have, um, in a way, the favorite. I know a lot of people at the same time who feels that McDonald's going to pull off the upset. I know when they had their uh, uh, media stuff this week, um, McDonald looked strikingly bigger, not just height, but an overall size, a lot, lot bigger um, than in a way. Um, is McDonald having the weight issues? I think he is. Uh, can in a way carry his power? Um, up from 108 to 115, now to 118. Your thoughts? That's gonna that's gonna be the main thought, unfortunately, because 
uh, like like we've talked about before, it hasn't been exactly been with, it, with a few exceptions like Murata. It has been an exceptional year for Japanese boxing. No, it hasn't. Yeah. So, but he is the golden child. Remember, he he was pretty much supposed to be Kasuto's heir, as far as being like the big money guy in Japan. Murata's starting to be that now, but. What's gonna fall into it is is that power. Can he, we know he has the skill set to put in combinations? We know he has great footwork. Can he carry that power against somebody that has been established in the division like Jamie McDonald? And let's not forget that not only is he fighting for a title, he's technically fighting for a spot on the World Boxing Super Series next year. Not no no sorry, on this this year. In the bantamweight division, so he has a lot. He has a lot to prove because he he has to win over a good amount of fans. I know they wanted to establish him here. He was willing to I think to go to the UK, but when it was Tete, but then when it came to McDonald, they they were perfectly fine bringing him to Japan. I think he'll pull it off. I think he'll be able to pull it off. He'll do it pretty well. And with him holding the WBA title and being part of World Boxing Super Series and Tete having the WBO title, that's probably the final you want to get into if you're the World Boxing Super Series. And I will say that um, speaking of Super Series, yes, uh, the, the winner of this fight uh, will get will be in the Super Series. Um Season two, the Bantamweight tournament uh, coming up uh, next year. Uh, your thoughts on this fight, Scorsese? Basically, just gonna be looking to see what he what he could do versus a sizable opponent. I, I mean, I'm not, I don't got much faith in McDonald. Some people I talk to seem to feel like McDonald gonna expose some things, but I, I mean, I, I've seen him, you know, struggling with Salis over here versus Kameda a few times. I've seen McDonald probably about four or five times. Hey, hey, you know, it, I ain't gonna rank them probably top 10 in the UK. I'll rank them top 10 UK fighters, but you know, it's, it's nothing special. We'll see, you know, for me, like Daniel said, can the power be effective to the body? Is he gonna fight a pressure kind of style like he's been doing at 115 when we sit when I saw him on HBO? You know, just what a change and whatnot. That little tournament stacking up to have all their champions, so good luck to both of them. Uh. McDonald's tall, but for me, the times I've seen him, I never he's he's never used his height fully. Uh, to your point, Scorsese, um, he's struggling that first fight with Solis. Forget struggle, Scorsese. He lost that first fight with Solis. Um, and Kameda gave him tough fights in both of their battles. They fought twice, him and Kameda. And 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 Kameda gave him a, a, a good go. Uh, in both of those fights, particularly the first fight. Um, in a way, is, is I think, more talented than um, either Kameda or Solis. Um, I'm going with uh, Kameda here. It's going to be a tough fight, uh, particularly if, 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 if McDonald is not too drained at the weight. But I just think that over time, because um, Kameda, because McDonald is hittable. Um, um, I think that Kameda will do just enough uh, to get a, a win. If he stops him, oh my goodness, that's very impressive. That would be very impressive because this is a big dude, uh, McDonald, at the weight. But um, I think I think um, Kameda will uh, scrap out uh, a, a tough decision here. Um, let's move on to. I'm gonna skip the Ken Shiro fight because um, I don't know too many folks are interested in that fight. Let's move on to the uh, uh, um, ESPN Plus card that's happening um, this weekend. Um, the double header um, at 115 pounds. Um, history making fight Daniel German on Kanye's fighting uh, Jonah Sultan. Do you know anything about Sultan? Um, sorry to say, um, I haven't been able to find much video on him um, of him. I should say, have you? Not What's much, it? not even not even through my Filipino contacts. That What's there's not a lot of footage of him. 
What's history making about? I have heard that oh. two two Filipino fighters are uh, basically fighting um, each other. Oh. It's, um, it's literally the first fight, uh, first world title fight between two Filipinos in almost a century. The last time it happened it was in nineteen twenty five. It's very rare, just much, just like it's very rare for Thai fighters um, to fight each other for a, a world championship. Uh, but go ahead, uh, Daniel. Yeah, like I said, that's going to be a very, very telling tale because obviously there, there's already talk to Superfly 3 happening this fall. And, 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 and by the way, is, and by the way like, speaking of that Super uh, Flyway 3, um, excuse me for interrupting, Daniel. Um, the scheduled main event for that Super Flyweight 3 uh, 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 will be um, SSR um, and Estrada. Yeah, the rematch. That's going to that's gonna be a good rematch, too. But, yeah, like I said, they've been looking at German Arcanius as, as being part of that card. And not to mention, like like we mentioned, like with Nietes before, we know Filipinos are looking to the air for Manny Pacquiao. And Arcanius is promoted by Pacquiao. He has a similar style when it came to punching power over the softball like Pacquiao. So there's a lot to live up to because obviously he's in a very, very hot division right now. And it's gonna be a pretty it's gonna be an interesting tale because uh I'm on pretty much on the undercard, you have Cal Yafai fighting. Too. So it's going to be two world champions at Superfly making their VFI speaking his US debut and is going to be making their case. And it's going to be a very, very interesting fight. I'm, I'm going to enjoy watching our kind of fighting because he is a real good fighter. He puts in the work. He's not flashy. He puts, a, he puts on his hard hat and he works for his victories. Um, and, let me. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I thought you was finished. No, but uh, but let me say this also. Like we just mentioned, two fights are gonna be on a brand new app that are world title caliber. Meanwhile, HBO is hibernating to August. <laughs> Again, I keep telling y'all, HBO. You know, I don't, I don't know what they're doing. Showtime is kicking their butt uh, in terms of boxing. Uh, they 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 keep going on like this. Uh, ESPN, uh, 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 they gonna get, they gonna open a can of whoop, a uh, whoop ass on them as well. Uh, <laughs> <It's all due. laughs> exactly. Uh, so, uh, your, your thoughts on this? Uh, let me say beforehand, I hear people continue to make this uh, comparison between Ankahas and Manny. I don't like it because to me, they do not fight the same. Just because they share nationalities and just because they're southpaws. Doesn't mean that they are <laughs> that, that, that um, it's fair to say that both fighters are alike in style. They're not. Uh, and Kahas is much more patient um, than Manny was. I'm at the similar stage of his career. Um, he uses the jab more. He goes to the body a whole lot. Well, let me take that back. He is not a great body puncher, but um, he doesn't use. He doesn't move around the ring like Manny. Um, doesn't have the one punch power as Manny. But I think in this stage of his career, he may be a better overall fighter than Manny was. Uh, go ahead, Scorsese. Your thoughts on this on on this fight with Unkan House? Get yeah, strong and young. I don't know much about the guy, but you know, for them to do the four ninety nine thing for, <laughs> for you to get fights, you kind of don't know about. Oh, it's got crazy. And it, yeah, Lomachenko Linares was free, but. Kai's got those big old legs. I, I do like his punching power, and it, it, it's at least that breakdown kind of power. I, I gotta see more, but um, you know, I guess I will see that. Well, not this week, but if they start the World Boxing Super Series, he ain't gonna be in it, from what I'm hearing. And so, interest in this man might just be lost. It might just be lost. Two champions on the card. Your five's on the card too, right? Yeah. Not fighting each other. <laughs> I don't well, get that. But but here's the thing though. This is a setup. They're setting up. They're setting up a unification bout with each other. This is mm -hmm. what this. This is what the long term plans is for. Uh, Ankahas should Ankahas win and should Kalyafai win. 
the plan for them is to fight each other uh, later on this year, if not early 2019. Yeah, I hope because uh, that, that World Boxing Super Series come around and one get in, that's all thrown out. And the person who well, they, they, they can't get in because the Super Series is at 118 and these two fighting oh, at yeah, 115. You're right. You're right. You're right. What am, whoa, whoa, you're right. You're right. I'm tripping. So yeah. if anything, or if anything, this is the, this will be a unification about here, right. either on ESPN or possibly on oh, Superfly well, that, Super, Superfly well, Three. Yeah, but that that ain't that ain't that bad. But Superfly Three, I I don't see the top rank guy going over there, and he's all you know. That's kind of why they went over there in the first place. I remember Gibbons not being too excited about fighting the guys at one fifteen, and now you see on Kaz. He still might be the be the forgotten guy if somebody come and give you fire a lot of dough, you know. But uh, cause that superfly is paying more than the top rank is paying right now. Them them dudes getting paid a little higher than they normally do with that superfly stuff. So he could still be left out, but you know, maybe Bobby and throw him a bone, get him to fight. I think people will favor him over your fire. But um, we'll see. See more of both of them this Saturday, I guess, if I can find the stream, cause I don't think I'm on. Put the Fortnite yeah, I'm not mad at the fight at ESPN Plus. I mean, they just throw that Lomachenko out there because uh, they just do a bone towards uh, 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 ESPN, the major network. Um, he's the showcase fighter, uh, Lomachenko, even though he shouldn't be. Um, but Crawford should be the showcase fighter. Uh, but, you know, uh, love fest with Loma right now. It is what it is. Yeah. Uh, so that's why he was on. That's why him and Linares was uh, there. Yeah. But if you want to talk about like what ESPN Plus is doing, look at the, look at what they're doing in the short time that they've even been laying a foundation. Okay, they, I have, mean, they have two yeah. world caliber fights. Sorry about that. Uh, two world caliber fights. They've already inked a deal with the UFC, multi year deal when it comes to showing their fight cards on their app, and most likely they're going to try to air. More fights coming out of UK. More fights coming out of Germany. They're, they're not playing around. I mean, you, you, I can't be mad at this. Um, the Anui fight uh, Friday. Uh, this doubleheader uh, Saturday. Uh, Bud and Horn. Um, yeah, you're going to have to pay a little something. But uh, <laughs> look at the quality fights and compare it to what HBO is doing. I'm just saying. That's why I say they, they you know, <laughs> they, they HBO is in in real danger here, um, of, of, of you know, getting their butt whipped whipped on both sides, one from Showtime and one from um, ESPN, oh, and God. if Hearn and if Hearn makes a serious dent, man, look, they already taken one from that Showtime side. The Showtime got, whoo, they got the heat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, their their only hope right now. Their only hope right now is to is to sign Anthony Joshua when his contract runs out with Showtime at the end of the year. Show B O. <laughs> that's the only hope. And yeah. oh dear, let's not forget this is not something new. This is probably what the second or third year in a row this is happening with HBO, where Showtime just taking them to the cleaners, just just in the amount of content that they're providing for boxing fans. Now they got saved last. They got saved last year with Canelo Triple G. They're gonna need to try to pull that again and possibly, like I said, try to try to get Joshua this year. Although I really, really doubt it can because it's looking like Mr. Joshua doesn't want to come to the states for his next fight. So, I mean, like I said, it's the only hope is to sign Joshua, who recently uh, re-upped with uh, um, Hearn. I can't remember the numbers, total fifty or hundred million dollar deal he signed with Hearn. But their only hope is to uh, hope that hope Showtime don't sign him, and they just put all they all they bank into hopefully signing Anthony Joshua. That's the only hope because right now, uh, because they throw all the eggs in Golden Boy. And and as uh, Miss Fight Lady tried to uh, point out uh, last week on the Ladies Love Boxing Show, um, that's a that's a mistake because uh, Golden Boy um, they're going through some major issues right now. Yeah. All their top fighters are losing. Uh, the Canelo thing. I mean, he he finally agreed to the Vada testing, so you probably see a Triple G rematch. 
But uh, he better not lose that rematch because if he does, Golden Boy, they're really down. It. They're really in the tubes. And if well, if they're in the tubes, HBO, forget about it. Well, the main thing, it's not a, they threw that in Golden Boy. They have Loeffler now with 360 promotions. They have main events. So they're they're running within a small group now. If something happens now, if something they happens, count on those light heavy, they can't count on that current crop of light heavyweights HBO long term. They can't. Now they well, want to make any real money. No, you can't. You, you can't in this way because you can't count on Loeffler always having putting on the super flag every year. You can't count on that because at some point these guys are not going to want to face each other. No matter how much money it is, there's always lulls in, in those divisions where the top guys don't face each other. The issue is going to be probably the main hope you probably have for Golden Boy is if enough Heyman fighters don't think like Adrian Broner, they look at Eddie Hearn's money and agree to it. Putting them, like I said, putting them in a promotional package. And which, by the way, also that takes away a lot of fighters from Showtime. So, and their, their mindset might be if I'm burning down, I'm burning somebody else down with me. Uh, let me first give a shout out to uh, uh, folks in the chat who listen live to the show. Um, Corin, um, Ayo, uh, Gus from Corruption and Boxing. I'm asking you a question, um, Gus. For you specifically, also shout out to MB who's listening. Um, he he mentioned the uh, 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 Cal Fly fight. He mentioned that um, your fight will get a decision, but Carmona has a good chin. I'm asking you specifically since you're listening, uh, Gus. Uh, what are you hearing about um, your fight in terms of him making weight? Um, I'm hearing he may be having some issues getting down. Uh, for those who don't know, your fight basically started off his career at basically 122, 126 shrunk his way down to 115 to get the belt, but um, didn't look great in his last fight. Um, I'm hearing he may have some issues making weight, but if, if you're on, Gus, um, answer in the chat right quick. Uh, what are you hearing about um, your fight in terms of um, possible issues making weight? Uh, but yeah, uh, continue on, Daniel. Yeah, that's mainly where it is. It's, it's that whole thing about it. you you got to hope that if you're HBO, you gotta hope that you can burn down Showtime too, because obviously the big money is coming in mainly from streaming. Because, because but you're not gonna give somebody, especially after what what the PBC has shown, you're not gonna give somebody a billion dollar war chest and and expect nothing from it. And Eddie Hearn has already shown that. If you sign with him, he's going to get you money. So ultimately, like I said, that, that's pretty much the main hope of HBO. Either that or, like I said, or they're just going to go full-blown on pay-per-view and just programming because it's not only it's not only like the actual cards that ESPN Plus is doing. They're doing a fight game style show with Dan Rayfield now. They're gonna have at least three dedicated shows, supposedly just to boxing, and then a couple dedicated strictly to MMA through the app. So that's a lot of content that you have to go in there. And unfortunately, the main thing with HBO, I think that also that they were always kind of they always count on their inherently higher subscription count. So their thought is we more people subscribe to us, so therefore we we can technically always have a bigger audience. The problem with that thinking is is if people haven't realized the reason why stream has gotten so big is because people are cutting the cord. Whether it's satellite or cable, people are cutting the cord. They're leaning more towards streaming service, they're leaning more towards you things like YouTube TV. PlayStation View. I think uh, supposedly Microsoft is going to come out with their own version pretty soon. So everybody's going into this area where it's cord cutting into it now. HBO did did put in like I said they did 
put in themselves put in the streaming but at the same time you're relying on people to pay monthly for something that you don't give them often because right now because right now on hbo other than vice other than a couple of other couple of other shows the fight game like the, the recent documentary around the giant there's not a lot they there's not a lot you can say that you can counter with for your hbo subscription yeah so they're really really down down the dumps and right now. and with espn plus they've opened up aaron has opened up his catalog so all yep. those good fights um, from years and decades past, you can find now. I don't even know if HBO dot HBO um, the website boxing website is even doing that. Nope, they're not. I I, I literally checked a day or two ago. They are not. Even like even when the fights that you could naturally assume they should do, like like they should naturally just have. Are like the Gotti War trilogy and the Barrera Mor Morales trilogy up 24 7. They don't. Because we have to we we have to address also the fact that a lot of the money member then in the sports budget is going to original programming. Like okay, the Bill Simmons show was canceled. But guess what? He's doing documentaries. He did like, like I mentioned, he did the on new the giant documentary that got a lot of praise. And they're gonna and they're gonna do more. They did the they just did the documentary Serena Williams. That's where their money's going. It's not going towards actual live boxing. And that's ultimately gonna hurt them in the long run because if Showtime's gonna survive, they're gonna probably take the man as the king of premium cable long term, the kings of premium cable and boxing. A, a crown that HBO has held for a long time now. Indeed. Um, I think we're going to um, end the show on that note. No, not going to be a long show. Um, thank goodness, because like I said before, uh, I was really dragging. I had a long couple of days, long couple of days of work um, to the point where I couldn't even get, I was just so tired. I didn't even get a workout in this evening. So um, I think I'm going to shut things down um, on, on that note. Um, I want to thank everybody who joined us in the live chat. Uh, um, MB, um, Gus from Corruption and Boxing. Shout out to Gus. Uh, hit me up on Skype when you're doing some um, more um, videos. I love to do. I would love to hear uh, uh, a preview and a recap of the um, Interway fight as well as the fights, uh, the double header on with the Junior Bantamweight double header. I would love to hear something from you, Gus, on your um, uh, uh, YouTube channel. Uh, shout out to Quran. Um, shout out to Io uh, for joining us on on the chat. I see um, Scorsese, you, you was in the chat as well. Um, going to you, Scorsese, for those who want to talk the sweet science or anything else, let the let the folks know where they can hit you up. Well, I ain't did this part in, so all right, I'm looking at it now. Don't tell me you can't even remember your Twitter, I, man. Hey, man, I ain't did this. Yeah, this exit is so low, but luckily I'm on my Twitter page. Shit. <laughs> I was, I was like, what is it? Again, it's sad, man. It's sad, man. I can remember hey. this Twitter better than he can. Hey, I ain't made it to the end of a show in a minute because I've been having to go pick people up before the end, but at the, I, I'm on my Twitter, so my Twitter is at my low place. One word. Is you want to talk some boxing? Fine. Don't troll me like damn that every. I got damn stalkers on there that I want to report to the damn law. Don't be that person. And my YouTube is low place hashtag MLPF. Contact me either one. And uh, uh, Daniel from the Scrapper for those who want to talk uh, the sweet science for those who want to talk the NBA specifically when it comes to the Miami Heat. Um, let the people know where they can find you. <laughs> yes, uh, you can find uh, me on Twitter at Ruckus99. Uh, you can find my most two recent works on Discover Digital Magazine. Delving a little bit to the WWE, like talking about their billion dollar, like really big deal for SmackDown Live and a couple of creative issues. And like I said, uh, tomorrow night we're going to have the show with me, Joe, and Francis for Box News. We we're meant to have it yesterday, but. Uh, Windows decided to launch an update that takes about a couple hours to do. Man, listen. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they do it often do, do it at the wrong damn time. Yeah, that's what happened. I literally told friends, okay, I'm gonna be on a 10. They do the update in like at 10 30. Okay, updates five percent done. Like, oh come on. So luckily, no, we're gonna do it on Thursday. Everybody's invited, and we're gonna talk about this other stuff and something not gonna bring up. Like I said, I mentioned that Heyman doesn't give the same deal with American freight fighters uh, that are Latino fighters because now he's going to have a pretty decent situation involving David Benavides because now it looks like David pulled a Pacquiao. He's signed to both Samson and Top Rank. Oh, wow. That I didn't even know. I didn't even know that. So, yeah, it's got some breaking news right there. Um uh, for those who want to um, uh, follow me, uh, talking boxing, talking music, uh, uh, talking fitness, you know what it is on Twitter. Uh, uh, um, Brother JR76 on Twitter. Um, as I said to begin the show, if you want to find out all things regarding Pound for Pound Box Report, the blog page, that's the place to go to to find any information P4P Box Report, uh, dot WordPress dot com. Um, that's the link. You check the right of the page. You can find links to our uh, pages and channels on Facebook. G+, Plus, YouTube, Twitter, uh, Tumblr. You can also find links to where to listen to the show. SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher Radio, uh, Player FM for the folks in the UK, as well as uh, Mixcloud. Next week, um, don't know if we're going to have a show because, um, to be quite honest, it's not much happening um, during the first weekend of June, boxing-wise. I have to be honest about that. Uh, and in real talk, uh, what I may uh, what I may do is uh, skip uh, next week, um, and then come back the week of the ninth so we can do a preview of um, uh, Bud Crawford and um, Jeff Horn and Bud Crawford. So I'm not sure, um, but it looks like right now, uh, good chance I may not do a show next week. I'll let you know if we skip next week. Uh, we'll come back in two weeks to do uh, all preview show of Crawford Horn, Horn Crawford, Santa Cruz Mars, Charlo, uh, Terry Flanagan's fighting uh, Maurice Hooker because so yeah, heavy boxing Saturday on of the ninth. So I'm not so sure. Yeah. Uh, again, um, for Scorsese, uh, for Daniel, once again, thank everybody who joined us in the live YouTube chat. Um, I am your host Michael. This has been episode 209. Uh, of the Pound Pound Box Report. We will see you guys next time. Everyone have a good evening, um, good night, and um, happy upcoming Memorial Day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. If you're in New York, enjoy Fleet Week. <laughs>